of players. Both of them former competitors in the Players' Championship. Kevin Jones, top eight last year. Playing Jeskai. Yeah, he was on Jeskai aggro that time. Kevin's basically on Jeskai any tournament you can eat that it's playable. And even some when it isn't. <laughs> Interestingly, they came around to Crackling Doom. I think with how many Siege Rhinos are in the format, uh, it's really hard not to play that card. So, With, with the popularity of Mardu Green, I would think the Jeskai aggro deck is the one that doesn't play black is a poor place to be this weekend. Yes. Just the card Siege Rhino has been so good against Mantis Rider. So Hoagland wins the die roll. He's on the play. His first play is a turn two, snapping Gnarled. And now Kevin will impulse that down. Really good uh, cut first couple turns for Kevin there. Yeah, it looks like he'll have his own card. It's going to be a Soulfire Grandmaster pass. I, I do have to say, Kevin playing Soulfire instead of Seeker of the Way, shedding a little tear for that one. <laughs> Won't be able to generate any prowess triggers, though. Uh... He was the last holdout for, <laughs> for Seeker of the Way. And Jeff plays a land and a Snapping Gnarled again. Now he has the fetch up. Yeah, it's going to be tougher to fire impulse this one uh, straight away. Would need something like a roast to take care of it. Third land from Kevin is a polluted delta. See a copy of Transgress the Mind in his hand. Maybe he fires that one off, hopes to catch a collected company before Jeff can play it. Yeah, that'll be a strong play. If Kevin had a Mantis Rider here too, that would be it'd be difficult to not pull the trigger on that. Now, this is the matchup, according to Jeff, that he thinks his deck is good against. These removal-heavy black-red style decks. So whether it's Mardu Green, Jeskai Black. Uh, Jeff thinks he says these are his good matchups. Yeah, Stratus Dancer adds a lot of utility in this matchup. Collective Company gives you two creatures, which puts pressure on the removal spells. I could see that. Yeah, uh, Savage Knuckle Blade is legitimately good in these matchups. Yeah, you get to enough mana to cast it, give it haste, and have mana left over to return it to your hand. Quite difficult to interact with. So Kevin skips on Transgress to hold up Disdainful Stroke. I suppose when he has to four mana, he can do both? Yeah, absolutely. Mantis Rider from Jeff. Had, that's the pun, the downside, though, right? If uh, he'd fired off Transgress, he might have been able to hit that Mantis Rider. Right. And just doing nothing with the mana. You just yeah, left, left, not a big fan. Right, left three mana on the table there. We go back over to Kevin. Now he will start on Transgress. He has a copy of Jace in hand. Actually, we'll go ahead and fetch first. For a smoldering marsh. And now it's going to be transgress. We'll see what Jeff's left with. Does Kevin still hit? It is Knuckle Blade, Stratus Dancer, Reflector Mage. So still good options here for Kevin. Yeah, this is a quite solid hand for Jeff. Less good after this Transgress resolves, so. Yeah, so you can take Reflector Mage or Savage Knuckle Blade. Uh, my guess is he has to take the Knuckle Blade. It just represents so much raw power. The Reflector Mage, you know, it, it, it's a strong tempo play, but Jeff's already so far ahead on board. Kevin just has to find removal spells to deal with what's already there. All right, so what he has to be worried about... Huh, he takes the Reflector Mage. Maybe it's just too much damage. You know, if he leaves the Reflector Mage, Jeff can reflect Soulfire, play a land, swing six. I guess Kevin may just be dead if he takes anything else. Yeah, and if Jeff is just hanging around with creature, or with Kevin, if Kevin just has creatures interact with Jeff's creatures, then the Reflector Mage breaks that wide open, whereas spells can more easily deal with Savage Knuckle Blade. And the difficulty from Kevin Jones' side is I believe the remaining cards in his hand are Mystic Monastery, Prairie Stream, Disdainful Stroke. So, so nothing particularly helpful. Needs a lot of help from this Jace. Yeah. Well, we'll see if he can do it. Jeff will play and crack a fetch land, so, sa so the Gnarlet will become a 4-4. Four -four. He could play Knuckle Blade and haste it. Also could play Stratus Dancer. Now it's going to be Knuckle Blade with haste. And here comes the team. A 4-4, four, four, a 4-4, four, four, and a 3-3. Three, three. Kevin will take one unless he chump blocks some. Go to one unless he chump blocks something here. Yep, just getting aggressive. And I do like this, uh, playing the Knuckle Blade this turn, because this might be the last time that the Gnarled can reasonably attack if you just uh, pass on that opportunity. 
So you get to be the most aggressive possible with this line, where you're kind of mixing what you're doing, going the other way. All right, Kevin goes to one. And that's going to make this one hard. He needs some red removal spell, would be my guess. Crackling Doom. Okay, that answers the Knuckle Blade. Kevin would go to three. Three's not, not good enough. It's close. I guess he could flip the Jace on Fiery Impulse. Oh, he actually, wait, wait. He might be fine here. Yeah, so he has the option to flip the Jace if he discards another spell, casts Crackling Doom, and then flashes back Fiery Impulse. He'll be able to gain five life and deal with two creatures on this yeah, turn. He doesn't have to discard Crackling Doom to do it, actually. He has the Transgress and the Impulse in his graveyard. Oh, so wow. it's already Spellmastered. Yeah, I forgot about the Transgress. So, okay, he discards Monastery, Jace flips. Look at this from Kevin. Going to one, seeming like that would be too dangerous, he's finding a way out here. Yeah, the mana checks out. It looks like he can do this. Oh, and he drew Roast off the Jace. This is huge. That's even better. So he's going to Roast the Knuckle Blade. Kevin goes to six. Soulfire Grandmaster doing some work. Now he's got to make sure to do this main face because Jeff does if he wants to play on that Stratus Dancer. And why not? So... Jace will plus on the Gnarled. Crackling Doom will take care of the Mantis Rider. Kevin up to eight. Swing. He can even swing with Soulfire Grandmaster. And Kevin up to 10. Jeff down to 12. He's turned this one around. That was a huge turn. The Stratus Dancer is somewhat problematic. Uh, it will be able to go face down and counter something out of Kevin in the future, though now the life totals are a lot closer. Strat Land Gnarled swings at Kevin for one, and here's the Stratus Dancer, and a pass. And Jeff, I, I think maybe punished for that Knuckle Blade attack. If last turn he played Dancer and left it up, he'd have the counter spell in one of these removals. Yeah, yeah he took a line that optimized his aggression, but uh, perhaps he just uh, would be much better suited by being conservative. And I do think he got a little bit punished for the line he took. Well, well if he, because his opponent already has Soulfire Jace, and Jace is already going to flip any one kill spell in Kevin's hand, gives Kevin the ability to double kill spell that turn with the Jace and, and gain a lot of life. It puts Kevin to one, but it, it's not really one. Kevin was sure to go back up. Right. He was trying to pinch Kevin, but uh, Kevin drew out of it. All right, Jace is going to give flash back to the Fiery Impulse. Well, Jeff will have none of that. He'll go ahead and flip the Stratus Dancer to counter it. Kevin aware. It's because he wanted to resolve this dig through time instead. Yep, just blocking for dig. Um, the more conservative line would be just to plus Jace on the Dancer, but that doesn't really get you anywhere, and you know you have a window to resolve dig yeah. through time this way. I really like how Kevin has played this. Now all he has to do is find a red removal spell in his top seven cards, and I mean, easy, right? Yeah, can't tag the Dancer with a Roast, but uh, certainly plenty of options otherwise. Well, even if he loses the Jace, he does, as long as he finds a Kill Spell, he will have Kill Spell plus Soulfire in play. That's... Yeah. Still has that Disdainful Stroke in hand as well, so unless Jeff draws Collected Company on this turn, that's going to be covered. Yeah, he doesn't, was not able to leave up the mana for it because he only had double blue, so that had to go into Dig Through Time. Right. Kevin doesn't have an easy one here. I always take an, uh, a second Jace if he doesn't find his removal spells. Yeah, you know, it's looking like the Jace is going to die to the Dancer, then second Jace would be excellent. Can't cast it on this turn, which is slightly awkward. Could be looking at the possibility of taking a blue source and Jace. So if his hand, you mean if, if that top of the deck was truly bad, he would take a blue source that he could hold up Disdainful Stroke? Blue source to hold up Disdainful Stroke or a blue source to cast Jace this turn. And I like this attack. Kevin offers a trade of Soulfire for Stratus Dancer. Uh, Hoagland declines, goes to eight. Yeah, I like that attack a lot. What can Hoagland draw? Is it a company? That's huge. That was his best draw right there. Yeah, that was quite fortunate for Jeff. Hopefully he can find something that he needs to capitalize here. Finds Knuckle Blade and Reflector Mage. This is just a huge turn. Yeah, he found a good one there. Kevin needed to dodge one draw step, and 
And Jeff made that so hard on him. A little bit shy of lethal, but uh, more than enough damage to kill Jace and connect for six. Wow, what a turnaround. Yeah, well, this is nine, so three at Jace, six at Kevin. Kevin goes down to five, loses the Jace. Wow, all right. <laughs> so back to the drawing board for Kevin Jones. He has a Soulfire in play, but he's, he can't cast it. Has Kalidus in hand. It's not bad here, but not good either. No, and if he casts Kalidus, Jeff can just force a chump lock with the knuckle blade. Exactly. And otherwise, the Stratus yeah, Stancer just threatens lethal in two turns. So well, not only was company the, the top deck Jeff needed, but I think it's he hit, hit the two best creatures in his deck. Yeah, that was an excellent hit off a of collective company. So earlier in the game, Jeff was punished a little bit for being a little too aggressive. And uh, on that turn, we saw Kevin get punished a little bit for being aggressive with his Jace and tapping out of his blue mana. So Kevin will play Kalidus and then pass. Looks like he's just going to have to chump block. He leaves up Disdainful Stroke this turn. Next turn, he gets Soulfire plus, plus something. Now, if Jeff... Yeah, he, he certainly can just swing the Knuckle Blade and the Dancer and take care of the Kalidus. Now, he's wondering right now if he swings extra creatures, whether or not Kevin can block one of them or whether he still has to block Knuckle Blade. Yeah, so an interesting mechanic is if Kevin doesn't block the Knuckle Blade, Jeff can just pump it. If Jeff does block the Knuckle Blade... Or if Kevin does block the Knuckle Blade, Jeff can just return it to his hand so that no life will be no, no life will be gained by Kevin by the lifelink on Kalidus. So Kevin is dead both ways. Kevin will block Knuckle Blade. And Jeff's going to pass before damage. He'll eat the Kalidus, play Sylvan Advocate, pass. Jeff, Kevin is at one. Killing Kalidus, also not a bad exchange. It's unlikely Kevin has a draw that gets him out of this. Knuckle Blade once resolved is very difficult for Jeskai Black. And especially now that Jeff has added a 4-5 to his board and Sylvan Advocate, that will take care of it. So game one goes over to Hoagland. Yeah, and Kevin had a Chandra, but that Knuckle Blade is exactly what Jeff needed to have. It's the only creature that could survive Chandra in his deck. So that was huge. Oh, all right, we'll go to the sideboard. Kevin Jones down a game here. We look at what he has. Dis Dispel, Radiant Flames, Duress, Ereshen Cleric, Silimgar, Obnixilis, Kalidus. What do we like here? Uh, so Dispel is typically good against uh, Collected Company decks. Uh, you don't want to go overboard on that effect, uh, given that Jeff is not on Rally, but I think that you do uh, want to make sure you have some access to counter spells uh, going on in your deck. Radiant Flame seems generally good against Jeff. You know, it's not going to deal with Savage Knuckle Blade, but it takes care of the Mantis Riders, the Sylvan Advocates, and all that kind of nonsense. Dragonlord Slumgar goes over the top of Savage Knuckle Blade and Mantis Rider pretty handily, so I like that one coming in. Uh, additional copies of Kalidus are solid on the ground. And I think I like uh, Roast for sure. Uh, Painful Truth seems solid. Gas back up, keep up on this one for one removal plan. And Ogresize Command's pretty good, too. Doesn't deal with company directly, but deals with every creature in the deck. Yeah, I mean, the big weakness is his weakness to uh, cards like um, Savage Knuckle Blade here. Mm -hmm. Once it's resolved, it's hard for Kevin to deal with. But right. you want to be, but if he becomes more of a control deck, maybe you can deal with this. Right, you're hoping to tag it with a roast. All right, on Jeff's side, he's got Erish and Cleric's Disdainful Strokes. Dispel, Void Grafter, Frostwalker, Roast, Negate, and Exert Influence. So I like Disdainful Choke against any Dig Through Time deck. Uh, Kevin also has those uh, Kalidas's. Uh, Ojitai's Command is a, a potential aspect. You assume there's probably some Chandra Plane Callers. All these cards are very good. So I like the Strokes. Dispel interacts with every removal spell outside of things like Roast, so that's very good. I imagine we'll see Void Grafter come in. Yeah, so that was what I wanted to ask you about. So Void Grafter, if, you, if we like Dispel, you have to think this is a better card. Yeah, because Void Grafter not only is it just a three mana creature that functions as a dispel, but it's also something you can find off a of collected company, which is just excellent. All right, well, Jeff Hoagland right now, number one on our leaderboard. That's because of his 
top eighting of all the modern opens this year. Uh, coming up, Star City Games actually has another modern event. This is Grand Prix Charlotte. It's happening in about two months from now. This is part of Modern Weekend, along with Grand Prix LA on the West Coast. We have Grand Prix Charlotte on the East Coast. So what this means is come on out to play another Grand Prix hosted by StarCityGames.com. We will get among the prizes there, we have the Jace Pour Over the Pages, Pour Over the Pages Playmat. You can receive this with the main event, and with a month of premium, you get the GP promo. This also will come with the three-day infinite challenge package if you get one of those and maybe aren't interested in playing modern. So a lot of ways to get this exclusive playmat. Over the course of the weekend, we'll have a lot of other things to do here. We have a premium rewards package you can get, which will give you the Noble Hierarch playmat, sleeves, deck box, and pins you could pick up at any point this weekend. Also, lots of things to do at the event. Cosplayer Christine Sprankle will begin be in attendance, as well as our guest of honor, that's Rob Alexander, making it out as an artist for an appearance along in the artist's alley with all artists you see here. We have that at Mora's. Registration has now opened. You're going to want to be sure to pre-register for this event, and you can do so at starcitygames.com slash gpcharlotte to register. Kind of cool to see Richard Kane Ferguson out. A lot of the weirder art and magic history illustrated by him. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the people, when I first started playing, his arc was really iconic to me. It was the first person where I could start recognizing and saying, hey, that's, that's one of that guy's, and then I learned his name. I was like, yeah. oh, I like that stuff. Stands out in a big way. There's just a lot going on in everything that they he does. They are really busy, which I like. <laughs> it's back when I believe that most of the arts were still painted as opposed to digitally made. Yeah, I definitely prefer the painted art. Nothing against the digital. There's some really cool things that come out of it, but uh, the, the feel for the painted art, I like it a lot better. Well, for So for Kevin Jones, Jeskai Black player, two-time Players' Championship competitor made it ever so close to the finals, all the way to a top-four finish, falling to Todd Anderson at the, in Roanoke. He's the 28-year-old from Kingston, New York. He has eight Open Series top eights along with a win. He is known for just guy and tempo strategies in just about every format. He won the Eternal Weekend Legacy Championship with Blue Red Delver. Uh, also played college tennis, actually. Other things you don't know about the daddy, as, he's, as he styles himself. <laughs> uh, as a walk-on after teaching himself the game. Uh, Qualifier team also enjoys reading and reads at least one mystery suspense novel each week. Yeah, Kevin Jones is super tall, um, so I imagine that's very much to your advantage playing a sport like tennis. Of course, athleticism matters a lot, but he has a good reach. I played tennis in high school a bunch. And you're not super tall. I'm not tall. super tall. Not so, short, but not as tall as Kevin. So Kevin's probably better than you. That's Yeah, that's probably just true. Tap lands trading. The, the tra players will trade for the first two turns. And it'll be Kevin out of the gates. How many times have we seen Kevin play a turn three Mantis Rider? I can't even count at this point. Jeff's down to 17. So here's an interesting question. Who do you think signed that Mantis Rider? Do you think that that's the artist? Or do you suspect, as I do, that Kevin Jones signed that himself? I really hope that it's signed by Kevin Jones. I do, too. That is... <laughs> it looked a lot like a word it starting with K, K and, a, and yeah. a J. And he'd just say, sorry, but Kevin, who's signing? He'd be like, well, I signed him. He'd be like, okay, so <laughs> I play, I'm the Jess guy guy. And he's like, all right, Kevin, you're right. You are the Jess guy guy. Who else would sign Mantis Rider? <laughs> Go back over to Jeff. Kevin's turn three play was a Jace. He actually had to double Mantis Rider draw, so Reflector Mage, a particularly poignant answer there for Hoagland. That's a huge swing. Kevin only has black and white mana up right now, so if Jeff has a collected company, that would push things even further in his favor. Yeah, it happens only blue source to play this Jace. So Dispel is down. And of course he does. Here's collected company for Jeff. Can he hit another Reflector Mage? Just play one every turn. We'll see. Void Grafter in those cards. Kevin doesn't know about that one. Not the best window for it either. And once again, it is the, I, what I still think is the best combo for Oakland. It's Reflector Mage plus Savage Knuckle Blade. And God, Reflector Mage is so good. Can't haste the Knuckle Blade this time, but still very far ahead. And Kevin knows that he has a copy of Radiant Flames in his hand, and, and he may have to start there. Takes care of two Reflector Mages. He's taking so much damage if he doesn't. But he's going to go ahead and roast the Knuckle Blade first. And I think you have to. If you just let Jeff on tab with that Knuckle Blade, you're just not winning this game. You can't deal with that card outside of roasting it or leaving up Crackling Doom. 
But for Kevin, the lands are not coming as they are for Jeff. Jeff hits land five here, is four mana, and uh, he didn't have another Coco last turn. It may have been his draw. Oh, it's Knuckle Blade with haste. Here comes eight damage. Kevin's down to ten. So I was going to say the other appealing thing about roasting was there's a high chance that the Radiant Flames will kill everything on this turn, the following turn, but another Knuckle Blade just makes that not true. That was huge for Jeff. Kevin's draw Kalidas. He needs more mana to compete with these Reflector Mages. He's stuck on one spell per turn, and he's losing his life points quickly. Yeah, he's in a lot of trouble. Shia finding more lands, though. He's just kind of stuck behind. Rain Flames takes care of the two mages. Jeff left with just the Knuckle Blade. Swings for four. Kevin down to six. In quotes, just the Knuckle yeah, Blade. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and he has, not only does the Knuckle Blade protect itself, Jeff also has the Void Grafter for it in hand. And the Dispel. Yeah, here's still an Advocate. Six lands in play for Jeff. It's a 4-5. Kevin finally hits land four. He's got two Chandras. That's a ways off. Halfway there. More than halfway there, but I don't think he'll get there. Yeah, less than halfway there in that we will never get there. Well, I think there's a couple Mantis Riders. Those just don't do anything. They're smaller than all the threats that Jeff is representing. Kalidas also just chump blocks. At least if you're Kevin, you're happy that Jeff doesn't have a creature land. So you only have to manage the creatures that are in play. But pretty far from being able to even do that. So we'll fetch here. He'll fetch down to five. And with a single pump, the, the pump, the knuckle blade is lethal alone. So he's playing Kalidas here as a chump blocker. And that makes sense. That's the, however, gr though grim it looks, that I, I think is his play. It's the most efficient use of mana. And how about a third Reflector Mage for Hoagland? That'll do it. Game and match. Jeff Hoagland, he moves to six and one. Yeah, that uh, Reflector Mage is such a powerful temple card, particularly yeah. when your opponent stumbles on mana and has just a 